Today we are going to discuss theory of interference. We'll go through the analytical treatment of interference. We'll see how superposition of waves can give you the interference there. And uh, what will be the condition there for getting the maxima or minima there for different parts there or different cases there. So all these details we'll discuss in today's discussion. So for theory of interference, remember what we are saying for interference, it is the phenomena of redistribution of energy in a medium when the waves meet under certain specific conditions. And what are the conditions there? The waves must originate from coherent sources. They must be of same frequency, nearly same amplitude. They must be traveling along the same line. Or if they are along different line, it must be at a small inclination. And after that, we'll see how we get the conditions for the maxima or minima there. Remember, interference is also due to superposition of waves. Like you have a number of waves there or waves meeting in a medium under certain specific condition. So they will give the resultant wave. If you take superposition principle where we have a number of waves meeting in a medium. In that case, the resultant displacement of particular point will be given by the vector sum of the displacement due to individual waves there. Like you have here suppose y1, y2, y3 and so on as the number of waves giving the displacement. So vector sum of the displacements there will be giving you the displacement of the resultant wave there. That is the principle of superposition of waves. So in interference also you have two waves of same frequency, nearly same amplitude, moving in the almost same direction and if they meet there, they give rise to phenomena of interference. So let we have y1 as a sine omega t as one wave, y2 is your a2 sine omega t plus phi, where phi is the phase difference between these two waves. Second wave will be leading by phi from the first wave. So by the superposition principle, by superposition of waves, waves, we have y equals to y1 plus y2. So it will be your a1 sine omega t plus a2 sine omega t plus phi. As the second one, this can be written as your a1 sine omega t plus a2. Now this we can take it as your sine a plus b. So that is your sine a cos b plus cos a sine b. So that way if you write it will be your sine omega t cos phi plus cos omega t sine phi. Now let's collect the terms. Like here we are collecting the terms of sine omega t. So it is your a1 here. And it is your a2 cos phi, it is your sine omega t. And another term is your a2 sine phi cos omega t. Now let's assume that a1 plus a2 cos phi, this is your a and this is your suppose cos delta and a2 sin phi this is your a sin delta so what you will get here if you substitute you will get y equals to a sin omega t cos delta plus a cos omega t sin delta. 
So this particular term, if you take A outside, in that case, this will be your A sine omega t plus delta. This is your Y. So this is the expression for the resultant wave. Where A is its amplitude and its phase will be given as your omega t plus delta. We can get the values of A and delta if you take help of this relation. Like here, if I suppose a square and add. So in that case, by the squaring and adding, this is suppose your equation 1 and uh, this is your 2. So from first and second equation, we have A square cos square delta plus sin square delta. This is your A1 plus A2 cos phi whole square plus A2 sin phi whole square. So this is your A square, A1 plus A2 cos phi whole square and A2 sin phi whole square or A will be equal to the square root of this quantity. This is the expression for A. Similarly, if suppose we divide second equation by first one. So, what we get here? Tan delta that will be equals to A2 sine phi by A1 plus A2 cos phi. So, delta will be your tan inverse A2 sine phi by A1 plus A2 cos phi. So, this is the expression for delta. So, we can get the expression for the amplitude, we can get the expression for the phase difference there. That is the delta term which we have used. Expression for amplitude, we can also write as uh, A1 plus A2 cos phi whole square plus A2 sine phi whole square and whole power is your half. So if you just expand this one, it is your A1 square then it is your a1 2 times a1 a2 cos phi plus a2 square cos square phi and here it is your a2 square sin square phi whole terms power is your half so this is your a1 square plus 2 a1 a2 cos phi now here if you take a2 square common, then what you will get? You will get a2 square there because sin square phi, sin square phi plus cos square phi will be 1. So it is this particular term. Or amplitude is your a1 square plus a2 square plus 2a1 a2 cos phi. It is the square root of this quantity. This is the amplitude. Now, uh, as we have intensity of the wave proportional to amplitude square, so that means intensity will be proportional to A square or this will be proportional to A1 square, A2 square, 2A1, A2 cos phi. This will be the expression. Suppose I assume that uh, here we have some proportionality constant there. So it is suppose it is your k times uh, a1 square a2 square 2a1 a2 cos phi. Now remember that k into a1 square can give you the intensity of the first wave because its amplitude is your a1. So in that case, it will give you the intensity of the first one. So we can write this one as I1. K into A2 can give you the intensity of the second one. Again here, it is this particular term. 
So now it is your root over I1 because it is your A1 only. Root over I2 cos phi. So this is the expression for intensity of the resultant phase there. Now here, what is this particular term? This phi is the phase difference between the two waves. Y1 and Y2 which we have taken. If you consider that on the screen, when we get maxima and minima, then at a particular point, when I am getting maxima, then it should remain same with time. It should not change with time. So th there should be permanent point of your maxima, fixed point of your minima like that. So if this particular term phase difference, which is there, the phase difference is either zero or it is constant with respect to time, then intensity term at any point will not change. So wherever you are getting there, maxima there, there will be a point of maxima only. Where it is minima, it will remain same there with all different instants of time. So it's not going to change there. And if it is not going to change, in that case, this term will remain the same there. Or it will remain constant there. So that is why we need coherent sources there. Because then the coherent sources will be there. We have where there is a phase difference is either zero or constant with respect to time. So in that case, it will remain same points there of maxima and minima. It is not going to change there. Now, we have got the expression for intensity as I equals to I1 plus I2 plus 2 root I1 I2 cos phi. If we want to take constructive interference, so for constructive interference, this I should be maximum. And maximum value of I will get when cos phi has maximum value. So for constructive interference, this cos phi should have the maximum value. And what is its maximum value? It is your plus 1. So when we get that, this will be there when phi is equals to 2n phi. Then you will get the constructive interference. So this phase difference which we have taken should be equals to 2n phi. For path difference lambda, phase difference should be 2 pi. So here for unit phase difference, unit phase difference, path difference should be equals to lambda by 2 pi. Therefore, if I have the phase difference, difference phi, that will give you the path difference as lambda by 2 pi into phi. Phase difference phi, the path difference is your lambda by 2 pi into phi. And what we have got the value of phi for constructive interference? So this is your 2n pi. Therefore, path difference will be equals to lambda by 2 pi into 2n pi and that is equals to n lambda. So what we get for constructive interference, interference path difference should be equal to n lambda. So this is the condition for constructive interference. You go on putting the value of n, 1, 2, 3 and other, you will get the constructive interference there. One more thing you can notice, for constructive interference, we have taken cos phi equals to plus 1. So here, i will be how much? This will be your i1 plus i2 plus i2. This will be the value of the intensity there because cos phi value we have taken as 1 there so if you take the maximum intensity so i max 
which is this particular one, how much it will be? This you can get by a1 plus a2 whole square because this one is your k a1 square. This is your k2 square, 2k root over k a1 into a2. So if you put that one, you will get that one as your a1 plus a2 whole square. For destructive interference, if you take, then you should have the value minimum there. So in that case, cos phi value will be equals to minus 1 there. And if you put that one as minus 1, when we get that, phi should have the value like uh, pi, 3 pi and so on. In general, you can say it is your 2n minus 1 pi. This is your phi. So in that case, the path difference, if I take, which was your lambda by 2 pi into phi. So this one will be equals to lambda by 2 pi into 2n minus 1 pi. So ultimately it is your 2n minus 1 lambda by 2. So this is the path difference for destructive interference. Also, as we have taken cos phi equals to minus 1, so how much will be i there? Because this time it will have the minimum value. i1 plus i2 plus 2 times and then minus 1. So this one will give you ultimately, if you put for minimum value, will be your a1 minus a2 for the square. Because again, it will be your k a1 square, k2 square, like that. So it will be your basically a1 minus a2 whole square. So here, remember the formula for i max to i minimum, if we take, it is how much? k1 plus a2 whole square by a1 minus a2 whole square. And this is what? This is the intensity ratio of interference pattern. And when we are getting, we are getting when I1 by I2, this is your A1 square by A2 square. We have assumed that uh, I1 is the intensity of the first wave whose amplitude is A1, second one has amplitude A2. So in that case, you can get this relation. Let's now take interference and energy, energy distribution, you can say. So, interference and energy distribution. Suppose we take maximum energy, that is the maximum intensity there. So, maximum intensity was how much? It is your k times a1 plus a2 whole square. What is the minimum? This is your k times a1 minus a2 whole square. If you want to find what is the average intensity in that medium there. So average intensity. This will be how much? It will be your i max plus i minimum by 2. How much it is your? This is your k a1 plus a2 whole square k times a1 minus a2 whole square by 2. So this is equals to how much? It is your k a1 square a2 square plus 2 a1 a2. Here it is your a1 square plus a2 square minus 2 a1 a2 and the whole term divided by 2. This will get cancelled and now what will get here? It will be your 2 times k a1 square plus a2 square by 2 and what is this one? This 2 will get cancelled so this is your basically I1 plus I2. That means what we have got? Average intensity is basically the sum of the intensity of the two sources there in that medium. 
whatever was the intensity of the first source intensity of the second source there there on the screen you have the average intensity given by the sum of the two it simply means that the points of maxima and minima which we are taking there the energy simply gets redistributed in the region of minima or destructive interference there is a decrease of the intensity but at the same time in the region of the constructive interference there is an increase of the intensity so what has happened to that particular medium energy has simply moved from the region of destructive interference to the region of constructive interference that is why in the definition we have said that interference is the phenomena of redistribution of energy in the medium so that also you can show from this expression this is all about the theory of interference